Welcome to Monarchist Minute. I'm Victor Smith. Tonight, TikTok admits to very controversial data breaches or the collection of unethical collection of data and usage of it. Also, more topics, including Boston University's controversial study about COVID-19 allegedly creating a new variant. But first, we will take you to our UK regular counter-revolution for some big news out of the UK breaking this week. Yes, hello, I'm the Counter Revolution, but you can just call me Will. Um, so as many of you in the States will probably know, we just had the shortest reigning prime minister in the history of the United Kingdom. And I, ca I can happily say it has been a disaster, to say the least. <clears throat> now, what does this mean exactly? Well, it means there will be yet another uh, conservative leadership race. And we've been told that a new leader of the Conservative Party will be selected as early as the 28th of October. But as we monarchists know, we never believe anything that comes out of the mouth of a politician. So who is actually who exactly is on the ballot? So we have Boris Johnson looks to be making a comeback. He's leading 11 points over his rival in the current polls. And honestly, I think people want him to come back because, one, the Conservatives need him back because he won in a landslide in the last general election. And two, because people, I, honestly, people would find it unironically hilarious to see him be ousted by the traitors to the nation that are Rishi Sunak and Savage Javid. And to just, to just have good old goofy Boris back. And... On, on, on the internet, we've seen the normal detractors of the Conservative government. We've had notorious nobody Stephen Fry commenting on it. We've had all, you know, the famous celebrities and whatnot commenting on Boris Johnson being a fascist and all these things that just aren't clearly true. And at the same time, it also leads to great instability in the United Kingdom as the rise of separatist movements in Scotland, led by the proto-fascist Nicola Sturgeon and Hamza Youssef, are growing in popularity. And it doesn't bode well, exactly, but I believe if Boris is to come back into power, despite him being uh, responsible for some draconian rules, such as COVID lock, uh, mandate lockdowns, and, you know, throwing a party or two in Westminster, which, you know, who, not Westminster, um, downtown, Ab downtown Abbey, da Downing Street, um, <laughs> which, you know, we've all done that at least once. Um, I think Boris Johnson is the best choice for stable government, but, but that's the democratic approach. The realistic approach and, you know, the most sensible uh, one is to simply have Parliament dissolved uh, momentarily, if or permanently, if you know we're feeling optimistic, um, to have King Charles rule over us uh, with his own personal mandate, which perhaps could see the stabilization of the realms for even just a little moment. Uh, one can hope. Um... I, for one, would love to see the Parliament uh, building turned into the Museum of Collective Stupidity, covering everything from, you know, average stupid people to politicians. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, what a, and I have heard talk of Jeremy Hunt being a so-called hero for the Conservatives during this, shall we say, chaotic time in UK politics. Do you, can you go into that? Well, I, you've I, clearly I... heard wrong, because Jeremy Hunt is, during this time, he advocated for having people, if they had been found positive with COVID, he advocated from, for removing them from their homes and putting them into camps. Yeah, I was just about to mention that, yeah, because yeah. he was, 
he um well, it wasn't him exactly but it was a woman he worked with and she went on an interview and they asked her about yes. it and she stated that jeremy um not exactly what her words were but it was along the lines of she said to jeremy hunt jeremy we can't take away we can't take away ch- mothers and fathers away from their children and he replied well why not and she yeah, said why can't and i she, it's, and, she, and, yeah. and the late and she replied to him, "Well, because the British pe- public won't stand for it. We've already done committees and such; they won't stand for it." And he said, "I don't believe it." <laughs> he, he's all, he, he is in well, the. What pocket. are they going to do? Shoot is, back? Well, I, well, exactly. I suppose this is why I shouldn't be trust so trusting of what I see on social media. You, you're, you're trusting the wrong people. I hate that pun, but I love you at the same time for making it. Um, (laughs) But um, Jeremy Hunt right now is the de facto leader at the very moment because he's the Home Secretary. Uh, Hopefully not for long. Um, I'm going to try and rejoin the EU. No, definitely not. Yeah, He, He was a Remainer as well. And basically the entirety of the Lever cabinet is being slowly replaced by these globalists who are loyal to the WEF and Jeremy Hunt has got links to the CCP. His, yeah, his, his wife, wife has links to the CCP. Now, well, yes. well, talking to well, but um, I've also heard rumors that we can expect a big turnout for Labour with everything that's been going on. Unfortunately, that does seem like the case. However, I don't actually dislike Sir Keir Starmer that much. I think he's quite a moderate in the party, in the Labour Party. He's proven himself to be not a very controversial figure, which I can appreciate in this times of constant controversy. The Conservative Party has a year, realistically, a year and a bit, to prove to the people that they can pull themselves out of this mess that that they have made. But at the same time, the Labour Party acts like petulant children whenever the conservatives even try to do anything remotely conservative so and and the only thing sounds like somebody we all know over here (laughs) i don't know who you're talking about but yeah sure um (laughs) and um i was worried that corbyn was going to come into power and that terrifies me especially for the fate of the monarch yeah, exactly. Jeremy Corbyn is an IRA supporting... Jeremy, Jeremy comes... Korbachev. Yeah, exactly. Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn is a Soviet... Is a, is, a bloody, is a bloody Soviet, I say. And I'm lucky and we are glad that he is no longer ultra-active in the political sphere. Isn't he an uh, independent right now, or did he go back? I have no clue. I don't follow him. Yeah, let me check you know, I, quite, I quite like to keep my sanity. Oh, um, wow, he's... <laughs> So this is the real question. Now that apparently he's an independent, but he's obviously oh, wow. still labor. Uh, is he is is uh, Bernie Sanders the American Corbyn, or is Corbyn the British Sanders? They're both equally stupid. <laughs> well, yeah. So which one did it first? Probably Sanders, because I think Sanders has been around longer. Oh. Second, hold up. I gotta give. Hell, they're both friggin'. Me is actually at least. In some aspects, especially when it comes to healthcare reform, he's moderately competent. Corbyn is just a bloody moron. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There is no redeemable qualities about Jeremy Corbyn whatsoever. Precisely. And it is and that is why he got absolutely flounced. During the last general election, which I believe was it 2019, I think it was 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, right. So yeah, but looking to conservative leadership now, there are only really two candidates that I support, and that is Boris Johnson, obviously, and um, a a true conservative named Kemi Badenoch, who um, who actually properly has conservative values and wants to leave the European. Um, Council of Human Rights because it is just another way of the European Union exerting its influence over the sovereign British Isles. Of course, uh, speaking of sovereigns... Yes, um, let's move on, shall we? if (laughs) If no one has any objections to such. Nah. 
Okay. <laughs> mind. Oh, uh, right. Uh, silence, would... silence is... I was going to say something that rhymes like silence is violence, but I don't know of a word that... Let's move on and congratulate the Romanov family on the birth of Alexei... Alexander. Alexander. Of Alexander Romanov, who was just born this week. Alexander is the first Romanov to be born in Russia since 1917. Yeah, I believe it was Congra nice. Congratulations to the happy couple, and may Alexander live long and thrive. You know, long live the Tsarevich. Now you I'll know, um, the Dolphins are returning to Italy, apparently, and the Romanovs are doing, doing or, uh, you know, getting more Russian. So... I know. I just started hearing the dolphins are returning to Italy, and I have absolutely no idea what it meant. Like until like the recently, dolphins are invading Italy. Why are the dolphins invading Italy? Dolphin noises. Dolphins are invading Italy. Why? Oh, no. It seems because they because they felt like it. They're they're finally they're finally done with the um, places, with all those Italians. <laughs> I, I mean, in fairness, a unified Italy is an eyesore. Reject Unified yeah. Italy. Embrace two Sicilies. Bring me the papal states. But um, I see. Think... He said it. He said it, and he's not even Catholic. He said it. <laughs> but um, I think Italy was dealing with some problems with water-based pollution, primarily in the Aegean Sea. So it might just be a good sign that the dolphins are returning to the Italian coastline because it means pollution is improving. Oh, we can fix That's that. Good. <laughs> we just need to have GM open up a shop right next to uh, right next to the coast, right on the coast. And, uh, you can tell what color they're painting the cars today by uh, what tint the water has. <laughs> uh... But um, this new birth in Russia of of Prince Alexander, it goes to show that 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 royalism is on the rise, I think. It may not be too obvious, but I think that, especially in Russia, now that, you know, it's not going well over there, people are starting to look to the alternatives. And since Russia has never, re has never been a democratic country, I think people will, well, as, as much as I'm sure we'd all love to see a constitutional, monarchical Russia, <clears throat> it, uh, or maybe not. Um, <laughs> or is absolutist uh, sovereign, but okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, we we can possibly see perhaps a revival of monarchism ar around around every sector of the world. We're seeing, we're definitely seeing it to the strongest, I believe, currently in Iran. But um. Apparently, there is a small monarchist faction, especially amongst the conservative parts of Russian politics. But the Russian National Party, or whatever the dominant party is called, whatever Putin's party United is, Russia, I believe that's what it's called. Whatever it's called pushes it under the rug. Like, does everyone remember back in 2014 that one ukrainian chick that like russia i forget her name but she was like always showing up in a uniform and everyone thought she was cute yes no idea uh, no I idea. Thought, i'll be I honest i thought she was in the russian government well she was i think she's a native to crimea i forget her name oh <laughs> natalie Pokal i cannot pronounce that hang on a second type the name in i will make an attempt this chick Natalia Poklonskaya. Poklonskaya. Natalia Poklonskaya. Yeah. Former Russian ambassador to Cape Verde. Yeah. That chick apparently is a very big Russian monarch. It's so much so that after she got sent to the Kremlin and she started disagreeing with Putin and the dominant party. Putin actually shipped her off to Siberia so she couldn't become a Russian demagogue in the Duma. Yeah. In the you Duma. know, <clears throat> sometimes reality... Reality is just funny sometimes. Reality is know, sometimes stranger than fiction. 
Well, you know, um, actually, though, I, I would like to say that I think that the Russian people are going to have to consider what's going to happen because, um, shoot, who was that guy counter counter? You 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 learned of him and his thing by the tweet we had. Um, the the guy who called uh Republicans monarchist. Um, was oh name? Steve Shives, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, that was. Okay, that was painful to watch. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, um, I he, he, you know, he basically, he, I think he compared Putin directly to being a monarch. Well, here's here's all of the differences aside. Here's one problem: um, Putin doesn't have a direct heir, uh, biologically speaking. You know, somebody. You know, like you know, Queen Elizabeth had you know Charles, and um, well, at any rate, um. So if Russia does have to consider whether or not Putin, you know, uh, is removed from power in the near future, which for the sake of the, um, which for the sake of, uh, shoot, what was I going to say? Which for, for the, the sake, sake of the of Russian humanity. people, I hope doesn't happen, uh, violently at least, because, you know, yeah. uh, more I mean, bloodshed, it's Russia. not good idea. Yeah, more bloodshed, <laughs> not good idea. It's Russia, and, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and but it, whether or not he's removed soon, I really need to condense, condense myself. Okay, whether or not he's removed soon, or whether or not he just dies in natural causes twenty years from now. How old is he? I know his mother was a survivor of the siege of Leningrad. Anyways, um, whether or not you know, Russia needs to think about who is going to succeed him, because he's seventy. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean because you know, uh, if if there isn't a plan, Dan, uh, there's going to be a lot of trouble, Stan. And I mean, man, will there be a lot of trouble? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, like I hope Putin has. I hope everyone agrees to follow Putin's will, whatever that is. If uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if he says like, hey, to to not have like another like massive bout of bloodshed, I'll, I'll select like Bob over there. Oh. He, he, seen, he he never he seemed like a pretty chill dude the couple oh. times I talked to him he's uh <laughs> you know yeah apparently Putin already has someone lined up I forget his name but he's pretty big in the Duma right now he took over briefly while Putin was dealing with some things during the Ukrainian war but I don't know what he's doing now or that may have been when he was recovering from his surgery. So there supposedly is a right hand man that's going to Dmitry Men Mendevev steps down or Medvedev? You mean the former former Me president Med Medvedev? Medvedev? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I mean I, I wouldn't be shocked if Medvedev uh came into power. <clears throat> but well, yeah. we're all praying oh, yeah, for be... restoration, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if um, what is um, like that high-ranking Russian general? I wouldn't be shocked. If Zerkov, either. Um, uh, maybe I can't remember what it well, is. I mean, that, I mean, I'm referring to or something like that. It's like S S. Last no, I don't know. S I don't follow Russian politics too closely. I don't. I don't really remember a lot of. Right, let's 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 just uh, if everyone agrees, let's just get off of Russian politics. Yes. Um. Wait. Uh, one last thing. Uh. <clears throat> our Okay, yeah. yeah, we're good. All right, what's what's next on the docket? That's my job to know, so I will stall for time whilst I scroll back up and up and, and up. And I up. will take this opportunity to depart for tonight. It's been great to speak with you, gents. I wish I could speak longer, but it, I am extraordinarily tired. So sleep is I thank important. You. I, I thank you. Sleep is important for me to, you know, write more thesis on why republicanism sucks. So um, I will I will speak to you gentlemen soon. And that's a convenient uh, time to jump into uh, our new topic. So, uh, you know that, uh, that, I don't know if you've heard of this, there's this thing called COVID-19. It's this thing that was around for a while and kind of still is around. Um, well, some people at Boston University heard about this thing. And uh, they made a strain... As far as I could figure out, just because they could, um, that that uh, that that that, uh, <laughs> that has an eighty percent lethality rate among the mice it was tested on, and uh, is highly uh, high is even more um, what do you call it? What you call it? What do you call it? 
Infectious? Uh, infectious? Yeah, yeah, more infectious. I mean, so one question. Why would you do this? I mean, okay, there is... Okay, there are certain things, okay, that you just don't do, even though you have the ability to do it. I have the ability to go downstairs and out the house right now, drive the car to the gas station, uh, fill up a can of gas, drive back with that can of gas, pour it all over the house, and set the house on fire. But just because I can do it doesn't mean that I do do it. Because at the end of the day, I would like to be able to wake up in a house. You know what I mean? You get you get my drift? You get you understand what I'm saying, man? Uh, um, we need to see what will happen for science. That's what's important. We need to do it for the science. What do we need to do for the science? We already know the thing is... We we all, I mean, the, what 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 possible benefit can we gain? What possible knowledge can we gain from making a super deadly strain of a virus? Well, um, well other well, than see, Charles, what we gain from that is me, Doctor Fauci, and I get more power while you suffer. Oh no! <laughs> he returns. You see, it's really good. It's really good because. I keep my position and get to do whatever the heck I want with no one remembering what I did during the AIDS crisis, and you suffer. I just realized I've never actually listened to anything Dr. Fauci has said. I haven't heard any of his announcements or speeches to be able to tell if that- are you, are you not a true member of the faith? The PH faith. <laughs> um... Yeah, I just now realized I've never actually heard Dr. Fauci's voice to be able to tell you whether or not that's accurate. Um, it, no, really, it, it, just, it's slightly exaggerated, but it is and pretty good. You hate your grandparents. It, it, I, I mean, it, it, did you, did, are, you just, are you trying to like actually copy Fauci directly or are you just doing the Freedom Tunes impersonation? I don't even know at this point. It's I, me, Doc. I think the droplets, the droplets, Seamus. It's the droplets. droplets. Oh. <clears throat> okay. So, without getting too much into everything, this I don't think. Of course, there are people who like Darth who would say that. Oh, they're going to leak this new tested COVID strain. What would they gain from that? <clears throat> uh, I don't, okay, honestly, I, okay, a slightly more, a COVID strain that would, that was just as deadly as the original, uh, one that showed up in Wuhan and but more uh, contagious, I could understand. But something with an eighty percent lethality rate, I don't think anyone would. I don't think any government would be <laughs> stupid enough to release that on its own populace because, um, y you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you want to be able to like run the country you're trying to take over completely. And if and eighty percent of people dying would probably lead yeah, to a it's about collapse. control. Yeah, it's a yeah. The reason why they would do that, if they were to do it, would be for control. Well, yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is, if it, if you're going to release something with an 80% lethality rate, that means that probably not 80% of the population, because some people might just not get it, because haha, bunker in the middle of North Dakota, funny. But um, but but no, I mean like that, like that kind of casualty rate, uh, if if it's really as contagious as I think it is would mean uh, society would just kind of fall apart uh, and you wouldn't have much of a society to control at that point because, you know, 80% well, of the people means 80% that's, but that's what they, But that's what they would want. If society falls apart, society can be remade in their image. No, 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 no. But what I, no, 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 but you're missing my point. The, the, the quality of life would just drop because, so you have 80%, Okay, it would just be a flat 80% of everyone. So 80% of the people who are responsible for the upkeep of roads and how that works, and 80% of the people who know about technology, and given how hyper-specialized everything is, 
uh, that's a pretty significant risk of, you know, people like there's only a few people who will fundamentally understand the Internet, uh, you know, and how to maintain that dying off. And so you have all these things that would be in danger of just. I don't know. I'm just saying that unless you're und, really stupid, und, und, I don't think you would risk leaving. Herr, Herr Charles, and then we will get all of the people to eat the bug, and they will be very happy about it. Yeah, we will make sure that the that the plebs will be happy in their solid. Be gone, Satan! Nein, you can never get rid of me, the the great Klaus Schwab. I already own it. <laughs> oh right. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. I had to. I had to go for a second. What What happened when I was gone? Uh, basically, I just basically I just said that I don't think that anyone would be stupid enough to release uh, a COVID strain that uh, would kill eighty percent of people. I don't think any government would be stupid enough to intentionally do that because society would just collapse irreparably and there's no guarantee that the people who released it would be in charge by the time it was all said and done. Honestly, the fact that some nations even thought about manufacturing bioweapons is just insane to me. The idea of manufacturing a disease which can't inherently be controlled by any human action just seems stupid to me. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wacky world, I think. It no. is, it well, is, I mean, a, it is sort of a wacky, wacky world. Let's, if there's no objection, let's bring us back down to reality here. Out of the world of hypothetical bioweapons and into... Well, something a little bit more sane. However, actually, I believe we have Aiden Halberg here. Hello. Aiden, did you have any thoughts on this? Give us a sign of hope. Uh, about COVID bioweapons? Well, the boss. Uh, the BU, well, the, well, the BU COVID study that we were supposed to be talking about. <laughs> uh, you'll have to remind me, what did this study find? Uh, no, no, they created a strain that can, uh, on the mice uh, it was tested on, has an 8% lethality rate, uh, and it's uh, very oh, transmissible. Oh, that study. Oh, okay. Um, well, as long as it's in a United States lab and it's not going to break out, you know? Leak from, uh, leak from movie studio, yay. Leak from uh, yeah. biohazard lab, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really like the so to break much. out of biohazard labs. But um, I, I guess the ray of hope, we've got our vaccines now for COVID. A lot of the hospitalizations are down. I'm not going to say that you know, it's all sunshine and rainbows in the hospitals. But most of the patients that at least I've been seeing haven't been, you know, COVID. Well, it's been more of the usual stuff than right. anything else. All right. Make a quick I mean, about that's not to say that whatever super COVID is being created isn't, you know, still worrying. But that's the kind of research that they've been doing for a long time. And a lot of the reason that they do this research isn't just for the purpose of bioweapons, but also just in case something like this ever does mutate out in the wild, we want to kind of know ahead of time how to fight it and what it's going to look like. That's why these so-called gain-of-function research happens in the first place, not just as tests for and against bioweapons, but also against real superbugs that could develop. We need to be ready, and we need to be able to fight against them. And if we don't do this research, we don't have that. Well, if I, I remember you said about the vaccine, and for a second I wanted to kind of get off the topic and mention how the CEO of Pfizer admitted that they never actually designed their vaccine to stop people from spreading COVID. Did yeah. anyone else see that? Um, yeah, yeah, I saw that. You know, yeah. uh, and, and how she how she immediately laughed after she said that. 
how many Here's people. The, thing. the public health officials have been lying to the general public for a while now because they want people to do one thing. But if you tell the people to do something, they're not going to do it unless they think it's necessary. And if you tell people, oh, get the shot so that you can protect yourself if you get COVID from dying, people aren't going to listen, you know? But if you tell them that it'll protect other people, oh, now suddenly people are interested in doing it. Of course, the COVID vaccine was not going to stop transmission. They knew it when they said it. I was saying when they said it that that was wrong. But, you know, that's just not how vaccines work. Vaccines protect you. They don't necessarily, the only way that they protect other people is by protecting you from getting it and getting sick with the whatever in the first place. Of course, they didn't do transmission studies. And of course, the transmission studies wouldn't have found effectiveness because that's not what the vaccine does. That's not what vaccines have ever done. Not directly, anyways. And I'd be hard pressed to think of a method where you could study the effect of vaccination on transmission in well, not in, but outside of a laboratory environment, which we don't exactly have. And, pub- and in public health research, it's kind of hard to do studies outside of a lab environment. Okay, but you're, what you're saying does make sense. But my big thing is the public was so... They misled the public, and the public was so dependent on that information. Like, people were worried about their grandparents, the elderly, and all sorts of things. And it just hits me the wrong way that they actually lied to the entire public about something that so many people were depending on for the safety of their loved ones. Yes. And that was wrong. There's no denying that for even one iota of a second. They're, what Lying to the general public is wrong. If you're, especially if you're doing it to try to make them do something, that, that, that's just going to fuel the conspiracy theorists even further than they need to be fueled ever. Because as soon as you've established that there's no way you can be trusted because you're going to say one thing while meaning another, all of a sudden they have free reign to say, oh, well, you're doing it for bad intentions. I don't think there were necessarily bad intentions at play, but there were certainly bad actions that happened. Speaking of bad actions, the latest bad action, or I guess we shouldn't be saying that it's necessarily bad, but the CDC, yeah, controversial, the CDC voted unanimously to put the COVID mRNA shots on the recommended vaccine list for children. Now that recommended vaccine list is super duper long and contains a whole bunch of things. You yep. might not remember getting the vaccine for pretty much every single one of those things on that list. Now generally I'm very pro vaccinating children and I anyone will tell you despise anti vax which is a burning passion. But the Given the fact that the COVID vaccine has been proven time and time again to be effective, especially when dealing with the mutated strains and the fact that now we know it's not going to stop it from spreading, I don't think it's necessary to put it on the schedule. I mean, it should be optional, like a flu shot, but I don't think it's necessary to require it. No, well, it's, a, it's, on, thing, it's, on, it's not... That list isn't required shots. That list is recommended shots. Yes. A flu shot also on that list? Yes, it, it is. Oh. If memory serves, it is. But, like, that means that a, that a school might have their school nurse come around and, and offer COVID shots along with the flu shot every year for your kids. Not I mean, they, like they, they'd, still, they'd still need you to sign off on it, but, like, yeah. I'm curious if they ever come out with like a bundle COVID and flu shot, like how they have DTAP and everything. They'll probably they'll probably develop one in the next five to ten years. I seriously doubt that actually. The, oh, okay. the the DTAP is only taken a few times and then you're protected 
in a very long term. If you're going to make a combination flu and COVID vaccines, you're going to have to reconstitute. You're going to have to redo them from scratch every year, just like how they do it with the flu shot and just how like they do it with the COVID shot. And there's so much ancillary testing that I would think you would have to do. I mean, it's certainly possible that they'll eventually move to combination shots, but I don't think it's likely. I mean, but imagine the possibility to call it the Confluy. <laughs> Confluy. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I like Your that. Your seasonal conflu- 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 shot. <laughs> I think Big Pharma is more worried about the money they could be making from this than from the fun name, personally. Which is why you will never. Which is why you will never. Which is why you will never see insulin at a price that is definitely affordable to most Americans without okay. insurance. Okay, but insulin has some really fun names, though. Like, you have insulin Lispro. Like, oh my goodness, that's so fun to say. <laughs> insulin what flow? And then uh, you have Glargine. I, like, that's just a funny name. <laughs> Glargine. Like, yeah, it sounds like you're trying to say gargle, but it's called insulin Glargine. And all of these are just various uh, variants of insulin that are more slow or more long-acting. There's a lot of different kinds of them. Then there's NPH, which isn't as fun. It doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. Yeah, but you would be correct in that assertion. Well, well, you know, on, on the subject of medical names, I've heard... And this is just like, you know, young me, younger me asking a question it wasn't that much younger but um that that you can't just call your medicine like you can't just have the name of the medicine be cough syrup you can't have the medicine describe what it's supposed to do so you have to come up with some other name for it but the names they come up for just like why though like receive already and it's all pseudo latin yeah names for prescription drugs like oh, the side effects list. list. And, and they like, say the Roman Empire is dead. I don't know. The pharmaceutical industry is pretty yeah. alive and well, and they still speak Latin. <laughs> my my grandmother, my my fraternal grandmother, uh, went to she would she went to school uh right before they stopped requiring that nurses like like her first I think her first year there they still required nurses to take Latin class, and then her next but then the next year they were like, nah. Whatever, which is sad, I guess. But you know, it's been very useful for me in my practice. But um, it helped, it helped me learn pharmacology a lot quicker. The only thing I know for certain uh, when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry in the U.S. is that the U.S. is the only country that allows pharmaceutical companies to actually advertise prescription drugs. And I and I kind of thought that was weird ever since I first started to think about it because isn't your doctor going to prescribe you whichever drug he thinks is best? Like, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, or or wh- whichever drug he thinks is best within the insurance plan. But <laughs> you think, I think what he meant to say was whoever's paying him more. <laughs> you poor blessed naive <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. The ideal doctor who isn't on the take and is happy with this meager $100,000 salary. Okay. The doctor is going to prescribe to you whatever drug company sent him the coolest looking new pen. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm... I think I'm, I'm kidding, <laughs> but I'm not. Okay, okay, they but even... That. Okay, even if, even if... They send doctors all sorts of paraphernalia because they can't technically bribe the doctors to prescribe whatever over-expensive medication that's a slight difference and not more effective, but is actually slightly less effective than whatever it was they were using before. But it's like quadruple or quintuple the actual price. So they can't bribe the doctors to prescribe that instead. So what they do is they just send them gifts, like... They invite them to fun conferences in San Diego. And at these conferences, you know, you're thinking, okay, well, that's boring. That's a bunch of doctors sitting around. No, that's a bunch of doctors enjoying the high life in San Diego and then pretending to care for about two hours at some seminar. 
But um, like, if okay, you, okay. If that were the case, okay, let's okay, let's just say that all doctors are on the take, but not technically. Which the they take. are. Which they are. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That it's still doesn't explain the ad. It is not technically bribery, but it is <clears throat> de facto bribery. Okay, the okay. Let's say all doctors yeah. like like presents. I mean, I like presents. Okay. Uh, that still doesn't explain the adverts because if the doctor is on the take, essentially, then uh, then isn't he going to prescribe whoever's giving him the giving him the the, the nicest uh, you know uh, Tim Hortons gift card? Precisely. It's kind of going to be like he's going to prefer to give whoever's giving him the best Tim Hortons gift card, but like if you ask for something else, I mean, he doesn't have to give you something if he doesn't want to. But he also can listen to what you want because ultimately, if you if he doesn't give you that thing, I mean, it's not like rich patients who can afford good health care won't just go somewhere else to a different doctor to get it. I'm so rich, I've put myself through medical school to prescribe myself the drugs I saw on TV. Aha, uh -huh. no. I wish it worked that way. No, you can't prescribe yourself things. Now, I gotta give myself credit. I gotta give my general practitioner credit. He was at least honest with me. When my general practitioner put me on new medication, he sat me down very gently and very honestly said, I'm not telling you this just because they pay me, which they do pay me to sell this, but that's not the point. He was just very blunt and honest about it. Like, yes, I get paid to give you this medication. Uh, but that's yep. why we're here. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, I never really had to have any like specific long term medication. Um, it was it's mainly just been uh, antibiotics and whatever. Well, but yeah, not, you're a young, you're a young twenty something. Just give it like thirty years. Hey, I'm not even a twenty something yet. I'm a nineteen something. Okay, well you're all, you're yeah. a young man. Okay, I'm in the prime of my life. You are one of the you are at the healthiest point in your life that you're ever going to be at. In like 20 to 30 years, you're going to have one or two medications that you might be taking on a somewhat regular basis because something will have cropped up, be it, I don't know, irritable bowel syndrome or like you decided to smoke a lot. So now you have to take uh, something for your, you have to take some kind of bronchodilator or, or some, something like that. And then, like, another 10 years down the line from there, maybe you're on a blood pressure medication, or maybe you're taking something for high cholesterol, you know? There's a lot of different things that people take. And, and, and who knows, maybe you develop type 2 diabetes because you find out you have too much of a sweet tooth, and then now you're on insulin for the rest of your life. A Aiden? Or, or, yeah. Um, how popular, just, just a right of thought, how popular is the phrase a short life and a merry one in your, uh, in, in your particular, uh, colleague circles? <laughs> the number of nurses I know who are DNR DNI despite only being 30 years old would shock you. DNR DNI? What does that mean? You're basically... Do not resuscitate, do not resuscitate, do not, do not oh. intubate. If you're, oh. basically, if they're dying because they can't breathe, you're not gonna stick a trach in them. Oh, well, that's okay. That that's uh, that's kind of that's kind of dark. <laughs> and that children is why world wars are a problem solver. No. <laughs> so I, I, am I don't. Know, that, Chuck, a world war will not be the solution to an elderly population. I, I meant becoming elderly. The already elderly have to fend for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> just how you get a bunch of old people and uh, dying and, and like no young people at all well whatever okay obviously it was about to be a joke so I don't have to think too hard we about could, it you, we, we, we could just do what Japan does just don't have kids um, Korea, I don't think that's a solution I yeah think my, my Catholic problem. nature tells me that that's like the worst idea yeah I know it is yeah I, uh, a large, a, a large, like fifteen-person van as as a wedding present is uh, becoming quite popular these days. <laughs> <laughs> what it's like? Um... Maybe that's what I should get my girlfriend for when I propose <laughs> to her. I should get her a fifteen-person van instead Will of a you... ring. Will you? You open the hood. Will you marry? No, no. I drive up and I open the passenger <laughs> side door, and I no, no. I hold out the keys. Will you marry me? <laughs> 
<laughs> holding out the car keys on one knee. He pinched the <laughs> ring on a ring finger. Yeah. Typical Alaskan <laughs> dowry. <laughs> No, no, no. The, the that'd, be, that'd, be truck, that'd be more of a truck, though. That'd be more of a truck, though. It's more of a dog sled, really. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Actually, while we're on the subject of vehicles, I do have this concept that I've been bouncing around, me and my colleagues at work. Okay, what would you say to the van up? Okay, so you have a pickup truck, right? And it's and it's great for moving for moving stuff, right? But the problem is you can only fit like five people in it, you know, and that's not a lot of people. And if you have to move a lot of stuff, you might need more than five people, especially if you're moving some pretty heavy stuff. And then a van's great because you can put a lot of people in, but you can't really move that much stuff. And I mean, you can by taking out the back seats, but that means you can't move as many people. And also the interior of the van gets dirty. So what if you take a school bus? Okay. Chop off. Uh, the top of the back half of the school bus. So you still have like you know fifteen, twenty people capacity. Wait, wait, okay, hold on, and hold on, hold on, and then turn the back of the rest of it into a uh, you know pickup bed, and you have just created Charles. the van up. Charles. You can man okay. up in the van up. Char- Charles. Okay, Charles. but consider. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Charles. Charles. What you just described this is, is what tobacco. I would know as a tobacco bus. I see them. I see them all the time when they harvest the tobacco because I live in like rural North Carolina. What, what ha- they literally take old bus school buses and they do as you say: cut off the top, the half, t- the top half of it, take out the seats, and then just fill it up to- with tobacco. Oh, it does what, exist. What, that's what you just described. This is an You're actual... asking for a tobacco bus. Okay, okay, okay. Charles, 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 just this is consider. an actual thing. What? A tobacco bus. All right. No, 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 but hold just on. Get, hold just get a regular pickup truck and ignore the law that says everyone has to have a seatbelt. Well, no, but how are you That was to... my grandfather. That was my grandfather. He would never wear his seatbelt. Okay, no, okay, no, no, but no. there is... Shove a bunch of people into the pickup bed. <laughs> Okay, but okay, but I will admit my van in up Hawaii. They do that all the time in Hawaii. They do that all the time out L- here. L- literally, no, on the highway, on the freaking highway. When I lived in Hawaii, people were just sitting in the back of their pickup truck. Okay, but that's also Hawaii, where the top speed on the highway is like forty-five miles an hour. No, to it was be fair. sixty. It was sixty. Were you on like a big island? I was on a on, yeah, I was on Oahu. Oh, you're on Oahu. Okay, I was gonna say every time I've been down to Hawaii, I've never been able to drive a car faster than 35. Imagine... That's because I was always on Kauai, and there's like no roads. Oh there. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Because that. it's Kauai. Yeah. Okay, okay. I I will just say before we move move back, uh, that the um there is one major difference, and that I only advocate for uh like turning like the back half of the passenger area into into the thing. <laughs> But I, I, I am kind of sad that this con- this idea I have has already been kind of invented. Although I will say, the ones Seb that just- Sebsense did it! Who did it? Sebsense did it! Who? The Simpsons. the Simpsons did it. Oh, The Simpsons did that was, it. That was a South Park reference, because I literally had an episode where Butters loses his mind because The Simpsons basically did everything he already was trying to do. Oh, oh gee. <laughs> How how could this happen? It, oh, it's geez. almost like the distance uh, was oh, on oh, the air geez, for thirty four years. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Although I will say there is something striking about uh, a tobacco a tobacco bus where tobacco bus. like the 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 enti- like the only thing that's left is the chassis and like the driver's area and the rest of it is just I don't know. There's something there's something yeah. I guess sort of. I, I I don't know why nostalgic about how that looks. Although I will say for new trucks, putting the engine under the cab and recreating like that '30s like Uber truck look that we had going on for a while, that's a good idea. Now, I forget what I was gonna say. But um, speaking of weird, wacky inventions, while we're at it, I had an interesting conversation with a coworker where we tried to come up with a way to create a detachable cup holder for crutches. <laughs> I was like, you can't carry your drink while you're on crutches, so we need to invent a, cru- a cup holder for crutches. Um, you see this? Yeah, I propose the uh, brilliant invention known as the soda hat. Ah, the soda he hat. He was number one. one of the, one he of the was finest. number one. 
Okay. No, but you see, this is the difference between between uh, you and you and I. Will okay. I'm trying to think of solutions that will benefit society as a whole, or more specifically, just large stereotypical Catholic families. Uh, whereas you're trying to think of solutions that will benefit the individual. You see, this is this is the typical uh, Catholic viewing everything through the family as the structure of society. Whereas you're viewing things through the rugged individualism of of American whateverism, so let me just let me just cross off Protestant bashing from the bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Protestantism has nothing to do with this. The you may think that the fact that I am a stingy son of a gun that's looking for a way to get rich quick and selling some pointless medical hardware. Like attachable cup holders for crutches is the perfect way to do that in the U.S. Because so I, if you want to, if you want to pedal, Ronald, Ronald, or, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan is smiling at you right now. Well, Ronald Reagan is smiling at you right now. I hate that, but I'm not going to sit here and lie because I'm sitting here in rural Ohio, and I don't want to die here. Well, well, you know, I'm really right. proud of you, Will. I've never well, been more well, proud of you in my life. Okay, okay. Can. So here's here's um here's where you're wrong, kiddo. You make Calvinism. Me Calvinism is all about making those facts stats of, stacks of cash because of some weird quirk in Calvinist theology. So therefore, it is very the get rich quick scheme is very much in line with uh, with Protestant thinking. Well, well no, a certain flavor. Calvinist. You're literally just talking about that doesn't have bad theology. Nobody likes Calvinist. Calvinist like Calvinist. Uh, I don't even think Calvinists like other Calvinists, actually. Oh, actually, that was a, that was a funny, funny meme about our slash Catholic memes. Like, <laughs> why Calvinists, Calvinists like Calvinists other Calvinists? And, Calvinists and Catholics are mortal enemies, like brothers and sisters. Or wait, no, brothers and sisters are mortal enemies, like Catholics and Calvinists, <sighs> or, or Orthodox and Calvinists. Or Protestants and Calvinists. Or Calvinists and other Calvinists. Calvinists and <laughs> Cal Calvinism. I, I, I will say, though, that, uh, that, that, that there was actually this funny meme where it's like, I'm sick and tired of you guys. Why why are you uh, why, why are you like this? And Luther gives this whole complicated reason about being like an abusive parent. Or they have John Calvin. I'm just a self-righteous narcissist, I think. <laughs> Remember, regardless of if you're Catholic or Protestant, we can agree on one thing, and that is that Catholic, I mean, Calvinists are right about predestination because they're predestined to have bad theology. Oh. That's... Also, uh, no, also, 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 Mormonism is weird. Mormonism isn't even Christian. Let's, let's yeah, not Yeah, I mean, that. I just didn't want to say it. Mormonism is someone's bad biblical fan fiction. About honestly, honestly, Mormonism is literally just his fan fiction. <laughs> well, uh, let's. God well, let's we do have an actual God. Mormon in our low council. If he ever listens to this podcast, Bunny Rich, if you would like to defend Mormonism, we and you won't be doing it here because uh, we have spoken. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, there's only so there. much nonsense I can take at once. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's, um, if there's no objection, why don't we move on and talk about a more happy subject? I like happy. Is, does anyone, does anyone object to being happy? I object to being happy. Okay. <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> Let's be happy. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I know. One last bash of Calvinist theology. Does anyone object to being happy? Calvinist raises a hand. <laughs> right. Uh, Aiden, uh, would you like to go into whose special feast it is today as we're recording? Uh, actually, I think I will defer to you on that. Thank you. Uh, Today is the feast of Blessed Karl, Emperor Karl of Austria. The blessed today, feast. today and you know uh, more about him than I do, so I will defer to you. <laughs> yes, and you know I've who knows more book. than me about Blessed Karl? 
Charles Coulomb. We did a whole special on Blessed Carl with Charles Coulomb earlier this year. You should go back and watch it. I saw a um, post with, um, with him showing up for the um, special feast day mass at the um, church where he and the empress got married. I forget the empress's name, like Zedna Z or Zita. 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 Yeah, Empress Zita. I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it. Yeah, Charles was there in Austria. Yes, and there was also a special mass going on tonight in Front Royal, Virginia. A mass being celebrated by Bishop Snyder in the old form. What happened? No, that? that is rare. It is. It is. To have a bishop give the Tridentine Rite. And not mass. only is it a Tridentine Rite Mass, it is a <clears throat> solemn pontifical high mass in Front Royal, Virginia. Impressive. I'm talking about going to that mass. What happened? Um, it is three hours away. Oh, that happened. Understandable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in three hours, I could travel to. In three I don't hours, know, really. Like, what's what's the, like? I mean, Ohio's three hours, hours from me, but that's five that's hours the away from me. In three hours, I could travel to. <laughs> Depends on if I'm flying or driving, though. <laughs> if I'm driving, in three hours, I could get like. I don't know. A fiftieth of the way across the state. I like how you just default to flying, <laughs> like like the oh, no. like the Alaska trope that you all have private planes because that's the only way to we get here. We don't have private planes, but we do fly everywhere. It's true because if we didn't fly everywhere, we would never get anywhere. Do you guys just if Alaska, as a callback to an earlier episode, if Alaska did have its own currency, would you just put the Wright brothers on the five dollar bill, even though they were they, as far as I'm aware, they never visited Alaska? Probably not, actually. Real question: but I'll tell you who we would put on our on our currency? Elizabeth Paradovich. Who? Who? And I'm betting that's someone none of you all have ever heard of. So now you have some homework to do. You can or come you back can just... next week and, and report back to me. You can give a book report on Elizabeth Karadovich or something. I don't know. Um, one half page, full page. Uh, so, do we have yeah, to do citation? 250, 250 words, double space, 12 point font, times new Roman. Do we have to do proper MLA citation? Well, uh, she is a... Uh, APA citations preferred. <laughs> oh. Well, she was an Alaskan civil rights activist. Uh, Someone just looked it up on Google. B yes, minus. I did. I did look it up so, on so Google. So she was so she was hugely influential in the civil rights movement, even before the civil rights movement as a whole started to kick off. Um, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she started her movement in the 1930s, trying to get Alaska natives, the Native Americans that live up here in Alaska, that is. Uh, the rights to vote and sovereignty over our oil. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that just make absolute sense? Yes, it would. And uh, she actually predated the mainline civil rights movement with, uh, like, Martin Luther King Jr. and the rest of them by a couple of decades. Now, here's my question. Back to the whole currency thing. If the Alaskans had their own currency, what would you call it? The dollar? Uh, you know, I don't know what we would call it. The Alaskan There's probably Google? a really clever name that you can come up with for it. Like, I imagine you could lean into the whole, uh, we used to be gold miners aesthetic and call them nuggets or something, but <laughs> I don't know. Call it a ruble. If you were oh, a man. Colony. <laughs> yeah, right. but... Culturally, we're not very Russian at all. Yeah. So, how do we... Uh, so, Aiden, since the next couple of episodes are going to be very heavily election-focused, did you want to get into the final, like, what Halloween actually means? Or 
what all of that means in a Catholic context. Well, in a Catholic context, Halloween is All Hallows' Eve. It's traditionally the celebration of uh, the Feast of All, all Souls, which happens on the 1st of November, where we... Saints is the 1st, All Souls is the 2nd. Ah, of course. It is the eve of um, All Saints Day, then, where we celebrate all saints, both known and unknown to us, uh, rejoicing that they are in heaven, followed immediately by All Souls Day, where we remember all the souls who have died, those in heaven and those not, and we pray for those in purgatory. It's fairly self-explanatory. Yes, and there are some traditions that have come about based off old medieval Catholic things that were done on Halloween, for example. Trick-or-treating was once known as souling. Indeed. And the kids would dress up as saints. In, and, the, and that morphed into dressing up as, insert costume here. <laughs> Superheroes, mostly, nowadays. Yes. Which, I mean, fairly similar concept, all things considered. I mean, I yeah. dress Reaper. But I don't have a scythe, unfortunately. Maybe I should start dressing up as St. Nicholas of Myra when, I, when it comes time for Halloween every year. Perhaps. And, there, and last year at my parish, we had the kids dress up as saints for the reception after the mass that on the Sunday that precedes All Saints Day. One year, uh, in, in my elementary school for All Saints Day, we had uh, the one of the classes they would the class would do the mass and and they would have to dress up as saints. Uh, I can't remember who I went as. I think I went to St. George. I can't remember. He became a confirmation saint later, though. But I can't remember who I went as. But, um... Speaking of St. Nicholas, didn't they recently call him an article about that? Which one? Nicholas Amira v. St. Nicholas. Um, I, I haven't heard about it. Yeah, they found his tomb in Turkey. I believe you mean occupied Byzant the occupied Byzantine clay, but okay. Oh yeah, it's really funny. They did a genetic study on Turks, and they found that most of them are actually ethnically Greek still. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! Oh, you missed the best part. Dang! It's so hard that the Turkish Anthropo anthropological society or anthropological, however it's pronounced. Anthropological decided to have a national boycott on ancestry. I, I mean I mean I had some I had like this one this one uh this one like Turkish like I guess Turkish nationalist guy yell at me uh saying that like Greeks weren't an ethnicity like like the modern Greeks aren't the aren't like you know like really Greek or whatever and that they're just like or I can't remember I think he might have said they were Turks or whatever um, and that, <laughs> I know that the Turks I mean but that is sad though given that you know that means that most of the ancestors may have been forced to apostatize which is sad but still it's hilarious that <laughs> the Turks are Greek that's just well it means if you have any ambitions of restoring the Eastern Roman Empire the people are already ethnically still there. It's just a matter of reconverting them and bringing back the culture. Uh, I All don't know. Let All us... Now, wait a second. We don't necessarily need to change the culture that much because Greeks and Turks lived side by side so long during the Ottomans that, especially when it comes to their culinary tradition, there isn't much of a difference. The only difference between the Euro and... Donor kebab is that donors are made of goat meat and euros are usually made of pork. Well, you see, here's the here's here's the problem though. Culture isn't just the food and the clothes and whatever. It's also the underlying values of a culture. So whereas the Greek underlying value these days seems to be corruption, um, you, well, no, okay. Jokes aside, uh, 
Greece, if Greek, proper Greek society, if it's anything, would have a very Christian, uh, you know, moralistic worldview, whereas the Turks would be influenced by the whole Mohammedism thing. So uh, that's a pretty fundamental part of the culture. So you would have to change the culture quite a lot by converting it, you know, so, sort of like how England of 1600 is kind of unrecognizable of the England from 1400, but, you know. Kidding aside about that, you actually mentioned England in 1600. <laughs> Let's, I suppose, mention a tweet that you wanted to mention. Well, I, like I said, I thought the moment had passed, but okay. Well, Michael, well, Noles you were the one that brought the moment back. Well, no, you have to make the reference. Okay, okay, okay. So, you all know what I think of what happened in 1688. Um, and how Charles. Was... Okay, okay. Long story short, Michael Knowles has proven himself to be uh, more than just, uh, a, you know, a standard American conservative. He has proven himself to be a Jacobite by standing in front of 10 Downing Street Hello. and saying that uh, now is the perfect time for France, Duke of Bavaria, to assert his right and uh, launch the latest and greatest in Jacobite uprisings. Um, that it as a joke. As a joke. Like, three Jacobites? Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold That's on. I will just say this. Hold on, Aiden. Okay, hold on. Okay, you're, you're a few hours behind me, so that means that I'm I get to talk or something. Um, <laughs> because that's how time works, I decided. Okay. And Hoping just... against all hope is something we Jacobites have been doing for, like, centuries now. So, you know, excuse me for, for wanting to secret be secretly believe he said it as a, as a jo in a joking way, but he's actually 100% serious. Although, <laughs> I don't think it he is. I'm just saying that I want hope against all hope. All right, moving, let's, uh, if there's no objections, is there anything anyone else wanted to bring up tonight? No, I didn't have anything else. Uh, let's see, was it, was it, was, was there anything else on the, the topic list? Uh, scrolling is hard, I don't like doing that. Uh, oh, uh, the talk, the talk de la tic. We forgot to mention the talk de la tic. Right, TikTok. So, William Stell, please enlighten us as to what's happening with the tickety talk. Well, what's happening is what people have been saying has been happening for years. But everyone knows who has happening, and now we have definite evidence that the Chinese are using the data gathered by TikTok to spy on particular American citizens of interest. Something that we knew has been happening for years, and why we should have banned the freaking app three years ago. But then we would have gotten all those, uh, all those, you know, children upset, and we all know they're the most popular voting block. I don't care about. They're the not even old enough to vote yet, Charles. Yes, exactly. But if there's one thing, if there's one thing, like the, my uh, younger cousin's generation knows how to do, is hold a grudge. Don't ask me how I know this. No, I'm joking. I don't know. Anything. Last year, how you know this all beer? No, I, no, I, I, it, it was a joke. I, I just made an assumption oh. that that, <laughs> that that the younger version of my generation. What? Okay, I'm a Zoomer, but where does Zoomer end? Like 2008? Like what? Like when? When do you like? What's the generation after Zoomers? Generation Eight. Eight. Okay. I generation. I think. I mean, we, we should just because whatever. Point being, associated with the screen. Ah, anyways, point being that uh, it's a good thing that I rejected a Moa TikTok on principle. Uh, so that's that's nice. Um, but but that being said, follow us on TikTok. We have how would a Moa TikTok even work if we don't? really use cameras. I don't know, come to think of it. Like, who suggested a Moa TikTok, and, and, and who is he so I can, like, slash his tires? Please uh, do not even slash his tires. Oh. I 
have a friendly chat with him over a cup of tea. Don't slash his tires. Can I cut his, no. um, I came up with it because I saw Jesse say something and Monax about how their TikTok's doing really well. I said, could we really be capping? Uh, well, I like how he's fading out of the internet itself please. decided that uh, that he, it doesn't want to hear your it doesn't want to hear your your petty justification. <laughs> we don't want to hear excuses. We want to hear results. Ah. <laughs> uh. Just, All right. No, so let's see. Uh, tick. If you made it this far in the video, please leave a comment down below letting us know who, if anyone, you plan to vote for in the upcoming election. It boosts engagement. It does, actually. It's it's a like the, more you, the, more you, the more you comment, it's the freaking algorithm. Yeah, I mean that that's why it's YouTubers weird. will tell you to like the video before the video even starts. Like, you know, how am I supposed to know if I like the video if I haven't watched it all the way yet? Boy. Like the video, smack that subscribe button, help us radicalize more people. <laughs> we oh, will and indoctrinate. And you have to leave some kind of vague threat, like if you don't subscribe within the next ten seconds. A bunch of spiders are going to come into your house and crawl in your ear or something like that. A lot of people do that for some weird reason. Yeah, it, that is really weird. But yeah, I don't know. Know. I oh, wait, wait, wait. Speaking of eight year olds to hit subscribe more often, uh, hit the subscribe button, but hit it, hit it an odd number of times, though. Hit it multiple times, but make sure it's an odd number of times just so you, you know you're still subscribed by the end of it. No, but, um, Unless you're already subscribed, in which case, hit it even, even number of times. Yeah, um, no, but, uh, uh, no, no, but speaking of YouTube meta, I don't, I mean, I think I, I watched YouTube when this was still a thing, but, wait, wait, uh, meta it was just... What? Meta bought YouTube? What? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, oh, no, no, that, that's, no, that's one dystopian future I can't handle. I can handle a lot of dystopian futures, but not that. No, uh, although I can't wait to watch YouTube in meta, when I could just watch YouTube in reality. Anyways, no. Yeah, yeah you but want to, used you to want to sit around on your virtual couch while you're sitting around on your real couch, and you want to watch YouTube while you're doing that? Yeah, I want to... I, uh, man, reality is going to be... I mean, virtual Inception! <laughs> Vir All right. Vir uh, no, 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 what? no, I didn't get to say my thing! Of all the dystopias we could have chosen to live in, we had to pick the most boring one. Yeah, like, not the perpetual war thing that kind of would be fun for, like, five or, minutes or before like you get Matrix, shot. Or, like, any of that. No, we, we had to pick corporate bureaucracy <laughs> dystopia. Yeah. No, well, anyways, uh, I was just going to see if... I'm, I'm going to pitch this off you guys to see if you think this is a good idea. Do you think YouTube should bring back the star system? Because it, cause before you had just a simple like-dislike thing, you also had a, you know, star thing. And as someone who won't like a video, if the person in that video takes the Lord's name in vain or anything else I find morally objectionable, I would I would like to give the video a four star because of that, you know. But I but if it... But, but uh, I can't give it a thumbs up because, you know... I have no idea. I have no I opinion of, about that. I just wish they brought the dislike button back. Oh, That's yeah. Made, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, okay, so because I, because, because I do have a personal YouTube account, even though I haven't done anything within, like, two or three years, um, I, I'm subscribed to the YouTube, YouTube channel for YouTube creators or whatever. And when they when they announced this when YouTube announced this change, the guy who who they had tried to pitch it to us uh, said, "We're not doing it because of like corporate, you know, bribes or whatever." It's like, oh <laughs> come on! It's like, no, we're doing this for the mental health of the content creators. Okay, uh, except yeah, except sure. that the content creator can look in his YouTube like analytics section and see the number of dislikes. So, yeah. what? I'm I'm sorry. They 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 did this just for the. I'm sorry. I can't think of any any plausible reason for them to do that the way they did, other than, um, 
corporate, the, well, a bunch of corporations got sick and tired, Activision got sick and tired of the newest Call of Duty getting 100,000 down votes uh, released trailer. I uh, just because YouTube got salty that their recap video ended up being more unpopular than Justin Bieber's baby. Oh. <laughs> Actually, no, I, no that was a justification. They did, they did say Dang. corporate pandering. They did say, I think the justification was, no, not the justification. They, they said, no, it's not because YouTube Rewind got, got <laughs> not negative, like, got a whole bunch of doubt votes. <laughs> Like, what even is the point of YouTube Rewind? Like, as someone who who mainly stays away from the mainstream of YouTube, like the most mainstream I I got was like was like game and film theory, but I stopped watching him. Like, what what's even the point of of YouTube of Rewind? Like, I like you just absolutely, I have absolutely no idea. But it's the it's one for, thing that... it's for us to make fun of. Right. Oh, that's uh, nice. And let us. Now that we're talking about social media, Charles, did you want to take us home? Um, if no one has anything else we want to talk about. Get on with that! Okay, Aiden. I got nothing. Well. I'm good. Yay, a short episode, but I have, uh, like, all the things to remove because people couldn't just keep their sailor's mouth shut this episode. Anyways... Oh. So yes, they, just had one... Charles, they had to talk about a J word <laughs> that I was promised would be avoided for the next several months. No, I was promised. No, I promised you it would be avoided for the rest of that month. Uh huh. I'm sure. Vic oh, can my. back me up on this. Hold on. Vic can back me up on this, right? No, like... it hasn't even been crowned yet, and you have to bring that up. Yes, I do. It's who it defines who I am. <laughs> no, uh, I just wanted to bring something up briefly. I just wanted to mention as we come closer to the Thanksgiving holiday. Remember, it was made by Puritans who were trying to find a replacement for Christmas and then feel bad about eating turkey. It was also made by Native Americans, and we don't have a whole lot to celebrate most of the time. So please do not destroy what little we have left. Thank you. Just be thankful Darth isn't on here. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> See, uh... You can cut that if while you want. <laughs> we, while, uh, while we all gather at the Thanksgiving dinner table next month, this is just a reminder... Not to discuss politics unless someone else starts the political discussion. Then you are free to hammer away respectfully. Remember, these people are most likely going to be your family. And we do not want to alienate members of our family unless it is gravely necessary. Counterpoint. Given that uh, that if you're watching this, you're probably a monarchist, you can uh, heal familial divisions by uh, getting the Republican and Democrat factions within your family to uh, team up on you. Uh, and you can uh, then wallop them with anti-Republican uh, taglines, lowercase r. Make, that would just make things even worse, because instead of... It's navigating against the common enemy. You are disinviting yourself from future family gatherings, which would be really bad. Well, they yep. probably your yep. family probably won't take you seriously, anyways, until we become at least like five percent of the population. Yeah, but anyway, but but, but still, yeah, or, so yeah, don't, you say don't, that don't bring gosh darn politics to the table during Thanksgiving. That's not yeah, no one takes powers. libertarians seriously. Okay, well, anyway, bring up also be sure to bring up the story of Mary Mount. And if you don't know what that is, <laughs> let's just say you'll never look at the Puritans the same way again. But, anyways, uh, okay, so now are we? Uh... Yes, we are ready for you to. I am ready for you to take us home. Okay, no one else has, has anything else. No Puritans are coming out of the woodwork to uh, brutally uh, attack me for, for being a... Uh, uh, they're not saying anymore. They're going, they're going to find you and they're going to unbuckle their hat buckle and start spanking you with the belt. 
Okay, I will say that it, that like I did is kind of like the plain way the Puritans dressed, but that that's the one good thing I will say. I did I did like how how you know gray it was. But anyways, dorky. That was my. Okay. Anyways, if you would like to uh 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 you know see us live, you can join us uh you know on our Discord server link in the description box below. If you would like to be cool and hip, you can follow us on TikTok. Just no, you kidding. can't. <laughs> you no, know you can't until TikTok either crashes or burns or becomes something you know not what it is. Uh, but we do have an Instagram. So as opposed to the Chinese spying on you, it's the Federals. And uh, we also have a Twitter, so you can uh, get inflamed. We also have um, a website that you can peruse. Apparently. Um, that's nice. So, and we also have uh, a shared Reddit thing for all U.S. monarchists. Well, yeah. That's Alexa, sort of whatever. Anyways, let's... we probably have, oh, we also have a, the Facebook. But anyways, now it is time for me we to also, end. Also, we also, and I know that you don't, you didn't really want me mentioning this, but election day, we might be going live. That's unconfirmed right now, but we are looking into the possibility of going live on election day. Also, starting so the next leave week, a comment if you think that's a good idea. Okay. Or if you don't think it's a good idea, feel free to leave a comment saying that as well. It boosts engagement and also gives me an easy out if I just feel really lazy that day, but I probably won't. I'll probably be I'll probably guilt myself into doing it. But anyways. I'll also, starting next week, we will begin talking about the, those elections and yes. candidates, and possibly even talking about some of the debates. Excuse and next week, I'll also... one because I can't find the freaking debate. Okay. Okay. And uh, other than that, the only other thing I can think of is next week I'm going to start uh, twisting Charles's arm and making him put a quarter in a jar every time he says "but." Anyways. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know. Uh, that is a good idea, but I think... Hold on, hold on. Uh, performance review, did I sound at least slightly less rambly today? Probably not. You don't want my own answer. Yeah, I, don't I do want I your honest answer. answer. I do want oh, your honest no. answer, and I want it now. We can cover it in debrief. Uh, if yeah. you have very bad opinions, but you need facts now... Anyways, um, okay. Uh, so, now it's time. Then. Now it's time uh, to 113, no, 124. Okay, now it is time to conclude in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this, this day, day. Bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and thank you for listening, everyone.